Hello guys, welcome back to Movie Reviews Series 12. We're back for another double bill, so the same problem as Series 11. Let's go through this. So, first up we've got is Go Karts from 2019 or 2020, depends if you if it's released in a different region or something, like, or something like that. So, this is a Netflix exclusive film from Australia, interestingly. So, let's go through it. So, Go Karts is, as the title suggests, is it's true with Go Karting, really, strangely. Um, um, a teenager called Jack and, and his mum and go to a new town, of course, new city. I think just deal with the past, really. Um, Jack, in particular, is um, obsessed of, to do with drifting, really, because apparently, many years ago, his dad used to take him out at night time and they did, did a lot of donut drifting in a car park, really. And it still, it still gets, it still comes back to haunt him, and also still does it. Uh, much because his dad got arrested, and he just continues keeps keeps doing it. Of course, just, I don't know. It's just like some something back of his mind that keeps going on, really. So, in, in doing sort of get out of trouble, he into, he finds go kart race. Of course, he gets introduced to um, a bunch of fellas. Some guy, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, some uh, black fellow, of course, who's more comic relief. He's, he's more the comic relief type of fellow, really. Sort of lucky type type guy, really. And the other one is a a girl who is, who is actually part of a company, who, well, a family on a business and to, to do with, like, powerful go-karts, go but more advanced go-karts, really. And... Although to be to be honest, I think she was she's sort of well she involved in the family business. I'll probably get to that to eventually. So they meet up, of course, and obviously get into the into this, uh, the uh, swing of things. He gets to of course to, to drive, of course, and he, then he encounters a let's just say sort of like a Draco Malfoy, um, Osver, <laughs> Australian version of Draco Malfoy type type character really. Um, in terms of like he's a part, he's more powerful. He's a more Rich, bit of a rich kid, bit of a snob. Um, the com and it's actually well, the, and he is sort of like the main uh, pinup boy driver for his uh, dad's co car company, of course, the advanced company that uh, supposedly, supposedly, um, the rich, um, uh, his girlfriend who, who who Jack meets, you know, um, you know, still actually works for, interestingly. So, the, and then the, and then there's this sort of um, lock horns to do, and of course, rivalry ensues. In the midst of this, he he gets en enlisted enlisted help of a ex go kart driver. I forgot the name of it now, but the guy the guy the actor Richard Roxburgh, who was the main who actually appeared in movies like Moulin Rouge, and played uh, Moriarty in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which I covered way back in series one back in the early days of the channel. Um, and it's like, you know, and obviously he's basically this sort of like um, grumpy reti uh, retired um, just driver, really. You know, a bit like a Mr. Mr. Miyagi type. Very much like, it's very much like Karate Kid with go-karts, if you look at it now. If, if you sort of get a picture of it, really. What's well, interesting film, I think Rossby's performance in particular is very, very grouchy. I always, have, I always thought when I first watched it, and when he came on the scene, I always thought it was Sean Pervy for some strange, strange reason. But it's Richard Roxburgh, of course. Um, again, pretty, it's a, um, obviously, and of, of course, he tra trains Jack. Um, does you know tries to get through there? But the thing is, he gets visions of his past, really, and to to do with, uh, of course, you know, the drift, of course, of his dad and everything else. His dad's influence is very much in his head, really, and it's all. Sort of detracts, derails, that sort of thing, during some of the races, of course, and that sort of break, sort of breaks his relationship with his mentor, supposedly his girl, his new girl, new girlfriend, and his uh, um, black lackey, very much, you know, token black guy lackey, very much, and you know, and obviously proves himself. You know, he tries tries to get everyone back together. Of course, we uncover about Ro Roxburgh's character, of course, because he used to be one, uh, but he had a co-driver as well, like a friend of his who actually used to race with him. But of course, sadly, got killed during a race, I think. And obviously, that still carries a burden carries a burden on him. And obviously, 
Jack takes on the suit, which is like a yellow and black suit that he takes on. And it's like, and yeah, it's just like, that's really, to be fair, that's, that's how it goes. And of course he wins, of course, and that's all, you know, it's a team race, dra comedy drama, well, comedy drama really very much, you know, say not film in Australia, Australian film. And that's really about it, really, for go-karts, you know, not much to say, but, hey yo. It's a decent. It's a decent film. It's a decent team film. If you, it's a popcorn movie, of course, but it's all right, really, to be honest. Right, the next film we're going to cover is called Lost Bullet. So this is this came out just this year, actually. It's a French movie. This is, and it's to do with a mechanic, like a police car mechanic, ends up being gets get, well, well, sort of, sort of now a convict, really, like a criminal, and does, and does well again builds. So like again, so again, builds police, uh, you know, a car mechanic for the police very much during the French, for, you know, in France really. Um, he did, he did get quite a few multiple robberies, of course. One involving a Renault Clio with a with a high powered engine, in, strangely, and also his pride and joy, which is a Renault Eleven, the red Renault Eleven. I think that's what it is. Um, obviously, the car itself has a, um, is, is after by the police, well, a corrupt, a corrupt police officer or lieutenant or, you know, someone higher, higher up because there's a bullet on the dashboard. And I think it was, I think it was like, I think that's the evidence of like some person of like the, of the corrupt officers, you know, um, sort of like, let's say mysterious ways, of course. You know, and this and this mechanic no know, knows, and of course he has the evidence of Cruz, which is a bullet in, which is right inside the dashboard of this Renault Eleven, and of course, and of course, it leads to just various chases, various action sequences, um, even towards the climax of the film. Um, you basically get you get a a very good part, a very good chase sequence, of course, around France, the Renault Eleven, which has now spikes on it, like uh, like like um. Car, like a lift, like a bit of a load of it, much like a forklift, from a bit of a forklift type bit on the, on the front, really. You know, and it so sort of, and it so goes like goes like really mayhem. It, it's very it's a very long chase as well, so it's like epic climax, big chase sequence, of course. Very good director as well. Very, inter very good actually. You know, very good, very good action stuff on there. Um, obviously, to, towards the end, the sort of main tenant throws a. Like a grenade in the boot, and actually destroy and basically just destroys the whole thing. Of course, and to be honest, to be honest, that car was is proud and joy. And of course, it lays st still stays in the garage, burned to cinders very much, and has flowers up top. Really, just to you know, because I think it was given to him while he was still a police officer, the convict. I can't remember anyone's names. And also, it's a French production, so I'm not really very familiar with the film. I came across, I think it was, I came across like halfway through the film really, because my dad was watching it, because he found, he was looking for something on Netflix to watch, find something really interesting, and he ended up watching this, and I thought, what's this? And of course it was like a pretty interesting French film, because I've seen, I remember seeing the taxi movies of course many years ago, well I think the first two, really, I never saw three, or four as well, I didn't know there was a fourth one that was, but, mm -hmm. but really, really good stuff, I mean, Fred, you know, if you do like a, if you if the French do like a bit interesting like crime thriller or something like that, they always always do some manic chase sequences. They do really interesting. I think that it's you know blow on the euros or the francs, whatever on, on the budget with this all stuff. But it's really pretty good, pretty good stuff actually. Interesting, interesting film to watch. It is dubbed as well actually. If you look, if you if you, if you have Netflix in the UK, of course it is dubbed. So it's it's it's, it's not anyone who's speaking French has subtitles. Now they dubbed it with um, English voices they have. So. See how you go with that. To be honest, I didn't mind that, actually. I mean, this all the dubbing was okay, actually, and yeah, just pretty quite surprised with it, really. Pretty good film. So, you this came out this year, so yeah, interesting. So, that's Lost Bullet. So, I'm talking about Go Karts and Lost Bullet, both for both for release on Netflix in 2020 this year, of course, even though I think Go Karts was premiered in my in two last year at the fact I like a Austrian Film Festival or something like that, but pretty good, pretty good stuff actually. So there's a, a decent start, open style, very sort of vehicle heavy very much in terms of these uh, films. So thank you guys for watching, as always, and I'll see you for the next video. See ya.